Jati Panya. So we have so far discussed about the characteristics of Panna. We continue with the list. Jati Panya. So this is the wisdom one gets from birth. So it is the wisdom associated in Patisandhi, Pavanga and Chutti Chittas. So in uh, Theravada Thera tradition, this wisdom is utterly necessary for someone to attain uh, absorption, samatha absorption and vipassana absorption, vipassana uh, lokuttara absorption. So in order to get jhana, vipassana and magapala, one has to have this jati panya. So normally commentaries interpret this person as a sapanyo. Sapanyo, if you look into the Vishuddhi Magga, the jata sutta. Buddha mentioned Naro Sapanyo. The commentary interprets this word as a person who has attained wisdom from birth. Tihetuka Patisam. Then, as a uh, further reference, I have given uh, Sapanyo, even though it refers as the person who got wisdom by birth, sometimes the sub commentary of Sushimaka has mentioned it is also possible to pay, say a person called Sapanyo when he acts with Sampajana, full comprehension in all his physical and verbal activities, right? And also, uh, in the Parosahasa Jataka, the Buddha has mentioned a person called Sapanyo, with wisdom, one who understands the meaning of what others say to him. So, Sapanyo means a person with wisdom. So, according to the Jata Sutta and its commentary, it refers to a person who has uh, wisdom by birth, but then sometimes a person who acts with Sampajanya, and also a person who has intellectual abilities to understand what others say. It means a high level of intellect. With a per person with such intellect, it's called Sapanya. Then we come into a wisdom called Nipaka Panya. Nipaka Panya is very important. It's called Parihari Panya. Parihari Panya means the wisdom which enables us to utilize our time in a proper way. In, it means a person who wants to have a spiritual progress should know what is the best time for his studies? What is the best time for his meditation? What is the best time for his duties? And so forth. So if someone applies wrong activities in wrong times, it is not healthy in our practice. The sub -com uh, commentary for Kugala Panyati suggests that uh, a person should not go into jhana in the time where he should go pindapat, right? It means very simple things, right? So he should not go into jhana when he's supposed to do the uh, activities, duties, responsibilities to his teachers. When the teacher is sick as a monk, he has to give up all these activities and come attend him fully till he get rid of the sickness, till he get cured from the sickness. These are instructions of the Buddha, direct instructions. So likewise, we should know how to keep our sila and when to study and when to stop studies and go into practice. And sometimes we, without the sufficient knowledge, we go into practice. This is also not effective. Then sometimes even if we have sufficient knowledge, we keep on studying and teaching without going to practice. So these are the, uh, when we lack Nipakapanya and also knowing the proper time, when it is suitable, when is, it is suitable for us. So these types of understanding in day-to-day -day life and about planning our life is highly necessary in order to attain spiritual progress, right? So if we take an example of the Jata Sutta, I think most of you have studied, Benson Sile Patithai Naro Sapanya.
เดี๋ยวให้คิดตั้งฟันยังจะบอกSo here it refers to a person with jati panya. Then here also we have panya. This refers to vipassana panya. Nipaka, a person who has the nipaka panya. This refers to Nipaka Panya. Or synonyms is Nepaka. Or we call Parihariya Panya. So you can see in the list of the Panyas, in one stanza, Buddha has referred to this wisdom in three places. So it's, it's the same element of wisdom, but different aspects. Right? So this jati panya can also be called vipaka panya. Vipaka panya is twofold. This patisanti bhavan vichuti panya associated with patisanti bhavan vichuti, and also the panya associated with tadala. So that panya is not very much. Uh, it's, it's also affects our life, but very much most important in the vipaka panya of patisanti bhavan vichuti. Right. So likewise, when we know the classifications of panya in such a way, we'll be able to. Uh, get the meaning in a proper way, so we'll be able to uh, understand the teachings clearly. So then uh, we go into the next explanation on page number forty-seven. Aya kosalle. We have another triad given in Sangiti Sutta. Aya kosalle, apaya kosalle, upaya kosalle. Aya kosalle means knowing the reasons for our spiritual development. That is. Getting rid of akusala and developing kusala, knowing it clearly. Apaya kusala, knowing the reasons for our spiritual decline. So, associating akusala and not abandoning, abandoning with, not uh, abiding with kusala. Upaya kusala. Upaya kusala means the wisdom which enables us to accomplish tasks that we cannot avoid. The inevitable tasks. And also, when the situation, the dangerous situations which can harm you, how to avoid them? So Bodhisattva's life is a very good example that how he managed to escape certain dangers and save him his life, and save the life of his relatives, his parents, his countrymen. So this panya to handle the situations is called uh, upai kosa. Right, upaya kosala, apaya kosala, and ayaya kosala. Then we have another two types of wisdom: dhamma jnana and pachakka jnana. Dhamma jnana, the meaning of dhamma jnana means the wisdom which experiences the natures as they are. That is how it is defined. Dhamma. Here, dhamma doesn't means realities. This means non-self realities. Here, it means the wisdom which understands or experiences. The natures in their actual, in their own nature, things in their own nature, right? Yeah. So this dhammayana, as Bande said, is also equal. Is also used for magga and palanya. I think we have given it in six sixty-three point two. Uh, wisdom in the highest level, wisdom associated with four supramandalin paths and fusions are also called dhammayana, right? So dhammayana, 
for the wisdom which knows the things as they are and also for the Madhapala wisdom because they know the four noble truths directly. Then we have Pachakanyana. Pachakanyana means the wisdom which have a direct experience about the object or about the phenomenon. Which have a direct experience. Dispels, removes the defilements and knows the reality claim. This is called Dhamme. So with this, uh, so pach, uh, pachakka, yeah. this pachakka jnana, and uh, also I have given, these two terms, dhamme jnana and pachakka jnana are very close to each other in our tradition. So in the, in the Dhammas Chetiya Sutta, King Kosala, the rule of the Kosala kingdom, in Dhammas Chetiya Sutta, it was the, to my knowledge, the final sutta, uh, Kosala, encounter with Kosala and Buddha. So he mentions that uh, he has a direct experience about the three attributes of the triple gems. So his faith upon triple gem is very strong. So the word he used was uh, Dhammanvay. I have a Dhammanvay. Dhammanvay means he has a direct experience Dhamma. Anvaya means based on that experience he applies, he has certain experience about the qualities of the triple gems and he, based on that, he can understand the attributes which are beyond his experience, right? Like you understand certain things with your direct experience and then based on that, you apply this wisdom to, some, to understand the things that are beyond your experience. So I'll read out, read the uh, paragraph. The two terms, Pachaka Jnana and Dhamme Jnana, are greatly related to each other. In the Dhamma Setya Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya, the term Dhamma or Dhamme Jnana has been used referring to Pachaka Jnana, direct understanding of the King Kosala about the attributes of triple gems. In the Jnana Vartu Sutta of the Sangita Nikaya, the Buddha has explained the Magga Jnana, which understands the four noble truths as Dhamme Jnana. And in Vibhanga Pakarana in Abhidharma, Dhamme Jnana has been interpreted as the wisdom in Magga Palachittas. Since the noble yogi understands the four noble truths directly at the moment of attaining supramundane paths and fruition, Lokutra Dhamme Jnana is also Pachakka Jnana, it's a direct experience. These, with these evidence, it can be arrived that Dhamme Jnana and Pachakka Jnana are synonyms to each other. So Dhamme Jnana and Pachakka Jnana are synonymous words, right? Because it means, Dhammayana means the wisdom which knows the realities in their own nature, or things in their own nature. Pachakanyana is a direct experience. Right? Then Pachakanyana in our sasana can be classified. These names which I have given are my, I, I, I suggest these names, with the evidences, references I found within the literature. There are four types of Pachakanyana. First Pachakanyana is, if you go to uh, 13.1, 63, 13.1, is the wisdom which directly apprehends the intrinsic natures of the realities. The subcommentary says, the you know, knowing the intrinsic natures of realities is a pachakka jnana. Knowing the universal natures of the realities is called anumana jnana. So it defines like that. Knowing anicca dukkha and anatta is anumana jnana. Knowing the intrinsic natures is a pachakka jnana. I have given this under the anumana jnana, right? in the next uh, explanation on Jnana. So, the knowing the intrinsic natures is a Pachakka Jnana. Then, when you go into Visuddhi Magga, you find another evidence saying that knowing the Banga with Pachakka Jnana and understanding the impermanence of the other realities which is beyond this experience is unreal. So, we have another Pachakka Jnana knowing the rising and falling of ultimate realities. Directly knowing the rising and falling of ultimate realities. Pachakanyana is uh, knowing the intrinsic nature and also knowing the rising and falling. These are given with evidences in the literature. Then Satu Satcha Jnana Pachakanyana means the wisdom associated in Magga and Palachittas, which are, is also called Dhamme Jnana. Right? It is Lokutra Pachakanyana, which I explained now. Then Avasesa Pachakanyana means, as in the case of King Kosala, he understood the attributes of the triple gems. Sometimes we have certain understandings about some person of something with our direct experience. 
right? Or sometimes we can call when a person with deeper chakku knows a certain object, he has a direct experience. Someone recalls a past life with Pubbe Nimas, it's a direct experience. So these wisdoms are called Avasesa Pachakka. The remaining, what are other than knowing the intrinsic natures, knowing the rising and falling, and knowing the Four Noble Truths and the attainment of Magapala, the all other direct experiences are called Avasesa Pachakkanyana. So these terminologies are adapted by myself, right? Referring to the information. Because there are no, we cannot, there are no specific terminologies, so I invented them for the easiness of explaining the idea. So then, English rendering of the term Pachakka as wisdom with direct experience can lead for misunderstanding that this wisdom should experience realities in their actual nature as objects are known with pancha vijnana and abhijnana. So some may apply this definition and start to think in vipassana meditation. Always when we say pachakka jnana, some may think that this pachakka jnana, some of the pachakka jnanas should know the objects like objects are known with five vijnana. Chakku sota gana jiva kai, because they are direct, direct experience. And abhijnana. So this kind of a wrong mis misunderstanding is there among some uh, learners that Pachakka Jnana should be something with uh, experience of uh, experience that we get through five Vijnana or with Abhijnana. That sort of experience, now if I go to the second paragraph, that sort of experience is correct with regard to the directly knowing the Nirodha Satcha with the wisdom of Magga Palachit. In the Magapala Chitta, which objects do we see directly? Is Nibbana. Do we see Dukkha in the, at the attainment of Nibbana? Then Nibbana, if we see the Dukkha, Nibbana is mixed with Dukkha, then it cannot be the ultimate bliss. Right? If we see the Samudaya Satcha, Nibbana or Samudaya is together. So these are contradicting points. So in terms of if someone argues that the direct Pachekanyana it should be like Abhinyana, or like the five vinyan, experience of five vinyana, even at the moment of Magapala Chittas, we have a one direct experience, that is Nipan. But the commentaries interpret as, and also in the suttas as mentioned, Dhamme Jnana, or the Pachaka Jnana, Magapala Jnana, Buddha has explained, it knows the four noble truths together at the same moment. So there is no such a direct experience even in the Magga Palanyana about the three noble truths as we have a direct experience in the Abhijnana or the five Indians. I am not saying that the understanding of Magga Palanyana is not Pachaka. It is Pachaka. What I am saying is sometimes we tend to interpret the word Pachaka Jnana as a direct experience that we have through Abhijnana or that we have with five Vijnana. So this is, I want to say, this explanation is correct for Abhijnana. This explanation is correct when you come to the experience of Nibbana at the moment of Magapa. But Pachaka Jnana is not only confined to such, such experience. So the literature has ample of evidence to, to be called something Pachaka Jnana. It doesn't need to have such a kind of a direct one-to-one -one experience as we get, as we get with Abhijnana or Five Vijnana. That's what, my, what is my argument is, right? So I think you got my argument. Uh, if I draw it here on the board, in the Magga Palachita, this is the Magga, knows Nibbana. But the Sutta say, the Magga Jnana, Sutta say Magga Jnana, as understands four noble truths and this is a pachakanya what does it mean if this is a pachakanya if someone tries to interpret pachakanya is a direct experience as it happens with abhijnana or five vijnana so it sees only one noble truth because at the moment it has no ability to see Dukkha. It has no ability to see Samudaya or Sniroda. But it is clearly mentioned in our literature, this is a Pachaka. If this is not the Pachaka Jnana, then it's a big problem, right? It's, it directly understands the Four Noble Truths. 
So pachakka jnana doesn't mean that it, it has to have a, such an experience like five vijnana and uh, uh, like five vijnana and abhijnana. That is the point I want to emphasize. When it comes to vipassana experiences, right? Yeah, so in the second paragraph, the second line, even that wisdom. So I'll read the. Uh, uh, paragraph again that sort of experience is correct with regard to the directly knowing and you know the satcha with the wisdom of mandapala chittas even that wisdom dhammena does not apprehend the remaining three types of truths directly at the moment of attaining mandapala chittas i doesn't i hear directly means as some some interpret but i say it's a direct experience so then we have to understand what is the direct experience the direct means pachakanyana explained in the literature when it comes to vipassana experience, as explained in the Theravada tradition, there is no necessity of a direct experience of sankharas, as objects are known with pancha vijnana or abhijnana. There is no necessity of knowing them at the present or as they really exist. Inside wisdom, vipassana bhavana me panya, and the wisdom of supramundane parts, the bhavana me panya. So bhavana me panya is mostly referring to the magapala wisdom. But to vipassana wisdom also it can be applied. You can get this information in the Neti Pakaranga commentary. Advocated under the tradition of Theravada is gained by developing wisdom attained with profound deliberate consideration. So our bhavana jnana, uh, vipassana jnana and magapala jnana in Theravada tradition is attained, I read the sentence again, is gained by developing wisdom, that is the wisdom, Developing that wisdom, repeatedly developing that wisdom, attained with profound, deliberate consideration. So this wisdom is called Chintamaya, which is attained through deliberate, deep, profound consideration. Having thought deeply, having thought, considered very profoundly. Thus this notion can be proven within the literature of the tradition. You can find these kind of experiences in the level of neti pakarna, this what I'm saying can be proven with the evidences in the suttas, but not in this kind of explanations. You find this in the literature of the commentaries, and also you can find this in neti pakarna. Because what I want to say is, when I say the Theravada Mahavihara Mahavihara traditions preserved by the Theravadians, I cover in beginning lectures I mentioned, I'm referring to the whole entire doctrine. That is how a tradition is developed. Even the text is there. How you interpret the text is what matters in the end. Because you look into the Kathavattu, there are the, the same text has been interpreted in various ways and there were disputes. It doesn't mean the interpretation of Theravada is correct. I'm not going to say that. I'm not referring, saying that it is correct. What I'm saying is, how does it explain in the tradition? It has no such explanation of a direct experience in Vipassana as some beliefs tend to believe that vipassana experience should be like observing a, through a microscope or watching a movie or watching through a, a screen. There is no such a experience necessary necessary for vipassana development. So this I am bringing with the commentarial evidence. I have translated this. So what does this say? In the end, I will draw, draw a diagram and explain how to, because I will be giving three translations Sometimes it may be a bit confusing because uh, wordings are similar. The repetition will be there. In the end, I'll draw a diagram and explain how I interpreted this explanation. So if I read this paragraph, understanding intrinsic natures of realities is called pachakanyana. This is a direct translation. Understanding universal characteristics is called anumananya. Right? This is how they interpret. As scriptures make learnedness in a person who studies them, it too only brings anumanaya, like so that the uh, wordings may, may sometimes be, be awkward. I try to translate uh, directly. So what does it mean? It means sutamaya. Now anumanaya is the knowing the uh, universal characteristics anumanaya, knowing the intrinsic characteristics pachakanya, according to the community. And it also says sutamaya, what you gain through listening also brings a type of anumanaya. It's not a direct experience. You study and you get a certain anumana. Anumana jnana is through inference. This comes with inference. A learned person first considers about the realities he has learned looking into their meaning. That is called akhara parivitaka. 
looking into the meaning what the teacher or the Buddha has taught then with repeated and profound consideration it's not just one time he keeps on keep on to un- keep on going looking to understand what does it mean he keeps on under- uh, thinking and repeated consideration he understands these natures of the realities more clearly and comes into conclusion conclusive understandings about their existence that is called ditti nijjana kantiya kitu it means akara parintakka means you think about it deeply but if you keep on think about it deeply uh, with a full interest and comes into conclusions that is called ditti nijjana kantiya so now having gained the sutame jnana having learned he get anumana jnana based on that he he thinks more profoundly and comes into a, a higher level of wisdom understand with that uh, with that he arrives at the wisdom called chintame because this is a deliberate thinking or consideration so he comes into a wisdom called chintame he comes into chintame jnana with such contemplation this is called chintam then having repeatedly developed this wisdom this chintam jnana now i think you understand he studies first he thinks about the meanings he deeply thinks and come into conclusions so that understanding is called chintam jnana then he repeats repeats that wisdom then he gets the pachakka jnana this is a very short paragraph of how it is explained then i have given another explanation based on the teachings of lady sayadaw below description shows how a wisdom that understand intrinsic natures of realities is attained so for it now we mentioned now it's like with the learnedness learning then we have investigating akara parita then we come into conclusive ideas understanding this is called ditti nijjana kanti so this is the is called chinta with the development of this we get the pachakana right we get the pachakana so pachakana jnana is two fold knowing the intrinsic natures and knowing the four noble truths to so go into the yeah, can take some time right now i'll be changing this diagram time to time and i'll be adding uh, again and again so in the end it will it will it will look different right this is just for this paragraph what i'm saying another explanation given by lady sir right uh, based on the uh, teachings i have given explanation so i'll be uh, upgrading this diagram after we have discussed about this part page number 49 so uh, <clears throat> now he is telling lady sir is how a person gets into the for if you go to the page number 48 47 please 47 pachakka jnana is four four right 13.1 13.1 sabhava janana pachakka wisdom which knows the intrinsic nature of reality 13.2 udyapya knowing the rising and falling 13.3 knowing the four noble truths that is the attainment at the higher level higher level highest level then remain so the first is the knowing the intrinsic natures so this is also called a pachakka jnana the knowing the rising and falling is also called a pachakka right so now Now, Lady Sayadaw has mentioned how a person comes into that 13.1, knowing the intrinsic natures. 
If you go to page number 49, these explain. First, the yogi has to study the characteristics and functions of Nama and Rupa as explained in the teachings. Understanding the meaning of what has been studied is called Sutamaya Panya. So, we understand what the teacher says. Then wisdom gained through listening. That is the wisdom gained. Then he has to think deeper about those characteristics and functions. That wisdom gained through thinking all is called Chintame Nyan. Right? So then, here now, this learning, we have uh, wisdom, wisdom through learning is called Sutame Then we have to come have thinking properly, big proper thinking, deep profound thinking. Right? We come into a system called Chintame. It's called a wisdom gain through. Thinking. So, right? Then, then he has to think deep about the characteristics and functions. That wisdom gained through thinking is called chintamena. In order to subdue the self-view, the meditator has to upgrade this wisdom further. In order to do so, based on sutame jnana and chintame jnana, Based on these two wisdoms, right? Based on these two wisdoms, he infers and comes into conclusions about the characteristics and functions of Nama and Rupa. So, what I translate infers and comes into conclusion is Akara Paramitaka and Dikti Nijana Kandi. So, the person based on this Chinta Menyana and Sutta Menyana, he investigates, he comes into conclusions, right? He upgrades this wisdom. So these all, as it was in the previous paragraph, starting from here, right, this all can be called chintame. Right, chintame. This is a deliberate type of thinking. So he gained through, under, through studying, he comes into a very good understanding, through profound thinking, comes into a high understanding. Then that understanding has to be further developed with deep thinking, consideration, and coming into conclusive ideas. Right? This is called, uh, this is how he upgrades the wisdom. This is how he upgrades the wisdom. So if you go to the handout again, then in order to do so, I am reading the uh, line number 6, right? line number 5, line number 5, in the la last, last, uh, last part, in order to do so, based on his Sutta Menyana and Jinta Menyana, the yogi infers and comes into conclusion about the characteristics and functions about the uh, ultimate realm. This wisdom is called Sabhava Dittiti Nijana Kandi. He comes in with this term, it's called Sabhava Jnana. Sabhava, sorry, Sabhava Anumana. Sabhava Anumana. Sabhavanmana means inferring the natures and the functions. This has to be further developed as Sabhava Janana. Knowing the intrinsic clearly knowing the intrinsic characteristics. Sabhava Janana Jnana. Right. So this is the point. This is the place where we know the intrinsic characteristics. We infer the intrinsic characteristics. So 
this is the path. So through investigation, so this is the wisdom attained. This is the wisdom attained through learning. So this is profound thinking and profound investigating. So it's like this is something that you have to do. This is not something which is attained. So I'll draw the line. So I can change, put them into this side. To come into this level through investigating the Akara Parimitaka. And Dikti Nijanaka. Investigating and coming into conclusive ideas. So based on that, we come into this step. Right? So what does it mean? What is the wisdom which knows the intrinsic natures? The wisdom which knows the intrinsic natures. How did you call it in uh, 6, uh, 13.1? In page number 47. In page number 47, 13.1. How did we call it? It is a pachakanya, right? It is a pachakanya. So this is a pachakanya in here. Right? Because knowing the sabhava lakana is a pachakanya. So how is this attained? This is attained through deliberate thinking, consideration, contemplation, understanding. So we study. We know the meaning, the things, and we make it familiar to our mind. We understand what it is. So this is the development in wisdom happens to a person who thinks deeply and studies investigating in these qualities. Right? So this is how Sabhava Jana Yana is attained. So there are some few further explanations. I'm not going to read that. I'll go to the notes of this uh, uh, paragraph. In order to facilitate this upgrading of wisdom to two types of knowledge, from here to here, Sabhava Jnana and Sabhava Anuman, ancient elders have offered the Buddhist posterity the information about the four aspects of each Nama and Rupa, Lakana, Rasa, Pachupatana, Palata. I consider this is one of the great, greatest contributions of the ancient elders to the Buddhist posterity. So, the characteristic function, manifestation, and proximate cause of each reality. When a yogi starts to complete, contemplate based on the information given in the books regarding the four aspects of Nama and Rupa, his wisdom gets elevated and he starts to infer to and to know the characteristics and functions of Nama Rupa by himself. He infers and he gets to know them directly. Right? So this is how Pachakanyana is attained. So this Pachakanyana, what I want to say, is not a, a thing that as we think directly seen through I, uh, five, five Vinyana and Avinyana. I'll, I'll explain this at the end of the lecture with further information. Yeah, because I, I uh, is called Pachatthang Janat. So it knows by themselves, or it's, it says, uh, we can call by knowing by yourself is also a proper translation. So I, I went into the translation with the common way of translating it, right? With direct experience, Pachaka. So, but I wanted to say I'm not uh, fi uh, fixing myself with English rendering. That's why I say this English rendering and direct experience is Pachakanyana sometimes has a direct experience. But what I want to say is it's not only a direct experience as we think. It has scope is more wider. So even someone comes in to the know the characteristics of realities in this manner, still it is called Pachakanyana in our tradition. So maybe the translation has to be changed. I'm, I'm not going into a to, to say it in a hasty, but I want, what I want to say is this uh, Pachakanyana is not confined to an experience as we get to Abhinyana and Phaibhinyana. Then I'll, at the end of the lecture, I'll also upgrade this diagram with information given in the Nepti and its commentary. Before that, we'll go further. Anumanaya. 
wisdom which understands the universal natures of realities and considers them as impermanent realities which beget suffering and non-self is also called Anumana. Then also this Pachakka Jnana, as Lady Sayadu suggests, this Pachakka Jnana, even though it is mentioned as a Pachakka Jnana in the commentaries, he suggests that compared to the higher Vipassana wisdoms, because we have four types of Pachakka Jnana, knowing the intrinsic nature, knowing the rising and falling, knowing the four noble truths. Compared to those attainments, this wisdom can also be called Anumanaya. Right? Compared to those attainments. So therefore, these uh, 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 terminologies has been used sometimes with compar relatively, with com comparison with other, each and each other. Right? Anumanaya is normally the understanding of three universal characteristics. And then, this wisdom, which was called Pachakanyana, uh, 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 in the sub commentaries can be also be called Anumana Jnana compared to the higher Vipassana wisdom. Then we come into another very good aspect called Anvaya Jnana. This Anvaya Jnana can also be called an Anumana Jnana. There's, it's another synonym. Uh, Anvaya Jnana can also be called Anumana Jnana. But the Anvaya Jnana, the, they, are, they are specific characteristics. It means what? Anvaya Jnana, we have a certain experience and we bring that experience to something that we have not experienced. For example, one understands the rising and falling of Rupa and knows it's impermanent. Then we start to generalize this. Whatever Rupa which happened in the past, present, future and all of the 31 planes of existence have the same nature. So bringing our experience, understanding through an experience or die with a direct or personal experience into something which is beyond our uh, limited range is called Anvenya. So that is the Anvenyana which is explained in the Visuddhi Magga. When someone gets to the Banganyana, he with his direct experience, he, trans he applies that understanding to the reality which he has not understood. That means in the long sansara, past, future, in all 31 existence, you find it in Bhaitapattana, Ardhinava. This is how he contemplates. He gets a, a, a rising and falling experience uh, in, in him. And then he applies this to all the 31 planes of existence and all the whole sansara and understand. All the sankharas are impermanent suffering and nonsense. Then there is another type of Anve Jnana which is found in Jnana Vattu Sutta with Buddha's direct teachings. He mentions in the page number 50. A noble being who has directly understood the four noble truths applies them to all the three types of uh, yeah it's called all the three all the three uh, yeah, through phases of time and thirty one realms and widens its wisdom. So that sort of wisdom in the Jnanavatu Sutta has been designated as Anvayanya. I have given a very long quotation in the uh, footnotes. You can read it by yourself in Pali. He mentions he understands the four noble truths, and then uh, the noble being understands whatever kanda reality happened in past, present, or future, of uh, all had the same nature. So this is a being who has attained the nobility after he considers about his uh, uh, he applies his wisdom. The subcommentary of the sutta has stated that this sort of application of understanding is the functioning of pachavikkananya. So this type of con contemplations that we do after attainment are uh, based on our understanding are called Pachavikkara. In many other places, Pachavikkara Jnana has been explained with reference to reflecting knowledges of the supramundane attainments. Therefore, it is plausible to term this sort of wisdom of a noble being as Pachavikkara Anvenya. So that's why I mentioned Pachavikkara Jnana has many functions. After someone has attained, he utters Usita uh, Kina Jati, Usita Brahmacharya, I have destroyed my birds, I have finished my tasks. So these are uh, called, uh, also belongs to the Pachavikkana. Then after that, he applies whatever Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankhara, in whatever universe, whatever world cycle, or whichever time, time whichever kappa, in the long sansara, in the past, future, whatever existence, all have the same nature. So these kinds of understandings comes into him. They are also classified as Pachavikkana Jnana in the Buddhist tradition.
So therefore, when we say Pachavekkanayana, it is not only reflecting the Magapala, Nibbana, Kilesa, Ujjanas. These kinds of reflections that we get after the attainment can also be termed as Pachavekkanayana. So therefore, in the beginning we study Pachavekkana, a very limited range of Pachavekkana. So now you know the Pachavekkana and the scope of Pachavekkanayana becomes widened, wider, right? So it's another information. Then Anvaya Jnana can also be called Anugamana Jnana and please write down Anumana Jnana, right? I couldn't uh, write it. Anu, Anugamana Jnana and an, Anumana Jnana also possible for this. So they are very similar terminologies. Then Abhijnana, I think all of you have most of the studies, students have studied this. Abhijnana is the wisdom which enables a person to do things that are beyond human capacities and to know things which are beyond human experience, ordinary human experience. Why do I say in two ways? Because in Iddhivita Jnana, you are not knowing something special, you are doing something special. So that wisdom enables you to perform certain activities which are beyond the normal human ability. Then the remaining Abhinyanas, Right? Remaining Abhinyanas. So that's why in Visuddhi Magda, Abhinyana is twofold. Iddhivita Jnana and Abhinyana. Iddhivita Jnana doesn't know anything specifically. It is an ability to perform something. So it is different from other Abhinyana. The remaining Abhinyanas have a very under understanding about things that cannot be known by ordinary people. What are these things? Knowing the past lives, knowing into the future, Knowing the objects that are beyond our range, visible range, listening to or knowing the sounds which are subtle and beyond our uh, hearing range, knowing the others' minds, these are very uh, extraordinary things that normal humans cannot do. Right? So therefore, they have an extra specific, they have specific significant knowledge. Idhvidanyana, with that wisdom, we are able to perform certain things like levitating, dipping into the drop, uh, going into the earth, going through a wall, so and so forth. So these abhinyana are mainly fivefold: idhvita jnana, wisdom or ability to perform supernatural acts; dibba sota jnana, wisdom like divine ear, which can listen to subtle and far away sounds which are beyond the hearing frequency and range of normal ordinary humans; cheto pariyana, wisdom which reads the others' minds. And it can also be called Pariyanyana. Pariyanyana. I have given you the reference. Ube Nimasanusujnana is recollecting the wisdom which recollects, recollects the past lives. Dipa Chakujnana, wisdom which is like a divine eye and which is able to see, or we call it, we don't call it see, we see which knows objects which are beyond our vis, uh, visible range. Then, uh, yeah, then Dipa Chakku Jnana is, there are another two, fast, uh, two uh, outcomes of Dipa Chakku Jnana. Knowing the Kama done by other beings, Yata Kamu Jnana, and Anagatan Jnana, looking into the future. Right? And also, there are two facets of Dipa Chakku Jnana. That is Manome Iddi, which, uh, uh, of which uh, Chulla Pantaka Mahatera was prominent. Creating forms which are similar to his self, and then we have Vikupana Iddi, changing our own form into a different one. For example, a monk suddenly become an elephant, a monk suddenly become like a Deva or a Brahma. This Iddi is prohibited in Vinay. There are, it's not the all Iddis are prohibited. You can see in the Vinay Pitaka, Buddha once asked one monk to perform miracles. He performed the miracles to uh, 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 increase the faith of certain devotees uh, under the instructions of the Buddha. But to Pindula Bharadvaja, he criticized for performing miracles. The commentary says the miracle which was criticized and prohibited is this Vikubhani Iddi, changing yourself, disguising yourself into another form. Because this can lead to lots of confusions. Being, for example, think a monk changes himself to an animal. The people may treat him like an animal, right? So this can lead to real confusion, and it makes sense that Buddha prohibited this, prohibited this abhinyana. It's not all the abhinyana. In some, in one place, in the Vinaya itself, when, uh, as I remember in the Mahavagga, Buddha asked an attendant who was at that time not Ananda, an attendant to uh, monk to perform miracles and show and make them. Uh, Arouse, uh, increase their faith, right? So no, not all it is prohibited. This Vikubhana Indi is prohibited. 
making yourself into another form. And also, the Padisamida Magga mentions, which I did include, if someone creates an elephant or an uh, army outside his body, like not changing his body, uh, outside his body is also called Vikubbana Iti. Right? So also called then we come into another extra information which I would like to read. Uh, it should be known that according to the literature, Devas and Brahmas by nature can see and hear sounds, subtle and distant forms and sounds beyond human apprehension and hearing with, the, with their physical eyes and ears. So the terms Dibba Chakku and Dibba Sota are given to those specific Abhinyanas on this analogy. Because we say in the literature, Devas and Brahmas have a very powerful eye and an ear. So with, in analogy of that, we gave divine eye and divine ear means similar to the eye of Devas and ear of Devas. Moreover, they can also read the mind of others. However, it is mentioned that uh, Putujana Devas cannot read the supramundane attainments of a noble human and be human, be, human being or any other deva and the deity of low noble attainments cannot read the supramundane attainments of a human or, an, or another deva which are higher than those of his. It is mentioned that lead, uh, leading deities of Paranimita Vasavati realm enjoy the luxuries created by lower rank devas having known their desire. So devas have also have a natural ability to read the others mind, right? others mind. Then, uh, Jati Saranyana. Jati Saranyana means recalling, knowing the past lives without a spiritual attain. This is this sometimes this can happen from the very childhood. And there is a story called Sukara Vattu. Sukari Vattu, right? Sukara Vattu in Dhammapada. Sukara Vattu in Dhammapada. According to it, a lady got the uh, got to remember her past lives listening to a uh, in, uh, word or saying of a certain Mahadeva. She didn't have any spiritual attainments at that time. Just by listening to it, she started to recall her past. Suddenly this Jati Saranyana had happened. So there is one incident in which the, uh, normally it happens from the childhood. Because normally beings remember their past life. We forget it while we, uh, in the experience we get in the mother's womb and while we are being delivered. But in a one case, one, one means I, I, we found by in a one case uh, in which a lady, a grown up lady, start, suddenly starts to remember her past life. This wisdom which, by which you can recall the past life or remember the past life without any spiritual attainment is called Jati Saranyana. Jati Saranyana. Then Patisambhida Jnanas are the four discrimination knowledges. I'm not going to read them. Uh, so they also have lots of uh, information. And then we have another three types of wisdom. Savaka Parami Jnana. All the wisdoms attain, spiritual wisdoms attained by uh, two chief disciples. Then uh, Pacheka Bodhi Jnana. All the wisdoms, spiritual wisdoms attained by the Pacheka Buddha. So called Pacheka Bodhi Jnana. Samasam Buddha Bodhi Jnana means uh, all the spiritual attainments attained by a Buddha and also he has some specific attainments which are not unique to Savakas we call it Asadharana Jnana in the Patisamida Magga explained about six types of Asadharana Jnana and then also we have Dasabala Jnana and Chattuvisarada Jnana I have given you the reference so these are extraordinary wisdoms of a Buddha and also it mentioned uh, regarding a common wisdom like for uh, understand the four noble truths even Arahant has this wisdom uh, Pacheka Buddha has this wisdom, but Buddha have a very higher level, a higher level than the other beings, right? Then we come into a very important point, the 4.5.64. This shows that out of this wisdom, Amoha, is the final spiritual, in terms of spiritual attainments, spiritual qualities that we develop. So, uh, such, uh, Panya is the final uh, goal. Final goal is Nibbana. In terms of uh, spiritual qualities that we should develop within us, Panna is the final attainment. So, in the beginning, we get a Sadda. Sadda means, so this Sadda I have mentioned is based on understanding. So, Panna was there. So, I'm talking about spirit. Uh, Panna here means Vipassana and Magapalata. So, first of all, someone has Sadda, faith. That faith, as I mentioned according to Chanti Sutta, is based on certain investigation. So when he has faith, what he does is he thinks of practicing. So he gets an intention of practicing, volition. So because of Sabda, we get the Chetana. 
Chetan how to practice. Chetan is not a faculty, right? But we get the intention. Without intention, nothing is possible, right? We get abolition to practice. But even we start to, uh, before, when we want to put the chetana, there should be a certain effort that is impossible, important. So when we practice, keep on practicing, spiritual progress, spiritual development doesn't happen in one day. It has to be done with constant effort. So even at the confrontation of difficulties, we still have to keep on yielding our effort. So why do we keep on putting effort, even at the uh, uh, and when we are facing difficulties because we have faith. So faith is the main reason for us to do something, do practice the path and also to keep on continuing without giving up. Because of faith, we keep on practicing. Because we know, even I struggle now, this practice is going to fruitful, be fruitful one day. So this faith is the energy, fuel for our effort. Then with the effort, when we keep on putting effort, the mind starts in the spiritual side, the mind gets a certain force because we are always trying, then the mind gets a habitual and a certain force uh, which enables uh, the mind to remain in the wholesome side without letting it to fall back into the unwholesome side. This is called sati. Sati is not the uh, present moment awareness. Sati means the power which makes the mind to be in the wholesome side. That is how sati is been explained. So how this quality happens? Because of when we keep on putting effort, when we keep on continuing our practice without letting, it, letting uh, without abandoning it, we develop this mindfulness. When we develop mindfulness, we get a very strong kind of uh, concentration or focus on the relevant objects. When we have some, because our mind is in the wholesome side, it's not running astray, so we can very clearly focus on a certain object. When we have a very good focus, then it's very easy to have understanding about the reality. So this is how the faculties are connected with each other. So in the end, with the culmination of Panya, we attain the final liberation, so-called Nibbana. Right? So this is how this paragraph explains this uh, explanation. You can read by yourself. Then finally, it is also to a 5.65. It is also too helpful to know how wisdom is developed till the attainment of Magganyana and Palanyana as explained within the traditions of Theravada. Right? So how I, I mentioned that I am going to update this uh, uh, diagram a little bit after at the end of the lecture. So we have come to the end of the lecture. So I will take a few minutes to explain what, how to change this diagram a little bit more and to make it a full diagram. Till the attain, uh, till how it leads to the attainment of Mandapa. So I will be reading and explaining this quotation, page number 53. I have given the full Pali quotation from the uh, Neti Pakaran and commentary if someone is interested. to It is a very long and I have made it very brief, the translation. You can see it is a very uh, long quotation in Pali. The Buddha or any other uh, respectable elder expounds the Dhamma to a certain person. Having heard the teaching, teachings, he gains faith. Then he investigates the meaning, word meaning, of the teachings, Vimansa. He continues this investigation without giving it up and bears the teaching in memory. Sometimes it's very difficult to understand the meaning. Some, so we may give up, oh, I don't understand. No, he doesn't give up. He keeps on uh, studying and also remembers, memorizes the important points. It's very important. Memory is very important. Other, if we don't remember things, we cannot link the our, our knowledge, right? That is called Ussahana. If you want to have memorize something, there should be a lot of courage and effort. And also to keep on investigating, studying. Then he compares the meaning of the words with other words and also compares this particular teaching with other teachings of the Buddha. He is not just satisfied with one teaching. And he compares, yes, when he is to have studied some other sutta, he finds out what does the Panya in this sutta and that sutta means. Are they same or do they have different meaning? This kind of comparative studies of the suttas he has to do. If we can apply with other traditions, it, it, wisdom will become more broader, more wider. Then also he uh, uh, tries to apply sutta after sutta and also word by word within the sutta and in the sutta. Then, then he further investigates and finds out its authenticity of the teachings he has learned comparing them with the instructions from Mahapadesa. 
Then he applied, there's a fundamentals, which we are studying in this lecture, the fundamentals of the tradition. So he applies it with the fundamentals of the tradition and finds out whether this sutta matches, has an authenticity. It doesn't mean that the sutta has to be originated from the Buddha or a great disciple. It can be a later invention. But still, if it doesn't match with the fundamentals, that is, that is called Kampaparika. Uh, Right? Then this knowledge is called Sutta Maya Panya. This is like a research, doing research and studying this wisdom. So this Sutta Maya Panya, which is in the diagram, has been elaborated in this paragraph. Then we come to Chinta Maya Panya. So if you look at the diagram, we have mentioned Chinta Maya Panya up to here. Right? Chinta Maya Panya up to here. And this we term, that is, uh, according to the uh, sub commentary, we term this as Pachakanya. Right? Now we will see that what the next paragraph says. Then based on, uh, before that, I'll uh, write it here. This is a uh, common scholar tradition. This is a Pachakana. Right, this is a Pachakana. Especially this, right? From here. Then, then based on this learnedness, he investigated the characteristics of the meanings mentioned by word, Vimansa. He investigates. Yeah, use the different terms. Then giving up the meaning of the word. Uh, meaning of the words, he grasped the intrinsic nature of the realities mentioned by you. Giving up the meaning means, for example, if you talk about chitta or patavi, this chitta and patavi gives a certain idea to us. That is something we gain through learning. So here what it means, you try to understand it practically. What is part of it? The hardness. You start to understand it practically. This is why he mentioned giving up the meaning, he catches the intrinsic nature. So this is the place where you, the learnedness becomes practical knowledge. So to this point, giving up the meaning means through the meaning, you comes into the intrinsic nature. To fill this gap, that's what I mentioned in the previous uh, page. The previous page means page number 51. Page, sorry, page number 49. With, in the middle of the page, I gave a note. In the middle of the page, 49, I gave a note. This note says, the ancient teachers have offered us with the lakkana rasa pachupattana padattana of each reality. What does it mean? It shows what is the characteristic, function, manifestation and proximate cause. So when someone has studied this, he first learns them as a learner, have a learnedness. Then based on that, he goes, up, makes it wisdom, a practical wisdom. So that's what is mentioned as giving up the meaning of the word, he goes into the ultimate understanding or ultimate characteristic of the, of the realities. So that's why I mentioned it is a great contribution that the elders have done to the Buddhist prospect. So now I'll go back again to the paragraph which we have been learned, studying. So I'll read that uh, second paragraph again. Then based on this learnedness, he, he investigates characteristics of the meanings mentioned by words. Then giving up the meanings of the words, he grasps the intrinsic nature of the realities mentioned by them, Tulana. Afterwards, without abandoning the intrinsic qualities, now we are here. Now, if you look, give attention to this uh, uh, diagram. So, having learned, having thought, he understands the intrinsic nature, right? Then, without giving up the intrinsic nature, he goes further, right? Without giving up. He gave up the word meaning and came into the intrinsic nature. Then, without giving up the intrinsic nature, without abandoning interest in quality of the known realities, having thought, right? Having thought, taketwa. So this is having thought. So I'll do the Pali words. Taketwa. Having thought. And then having thought well. Vitaketwa. Having thought well. Having deeply considered Opaparika, he investigates the universal qualities such as impermanence uh, and the conditioned nature of the realities. So he comes into understanding the universal natures, universal characteristics. Sabhava Jnana, so it is called, uh, we call it Tilakkana Jnana. Pali, understanding the universal characters. Uh, 
right? Understand the universe of characters. So he understands conditioned nature, Sankata Lakana, it is also included in the Lakana, so I don't mention it separately, and the universal characters. Then he repeatedly observes those realities which have been thoroughly investigated. So then he understands this Tilakana, right? Then the next sentence is very important if you can give it some attention to the paper. Then he repeatedly observes those realities which have been thoroughly investigated, having, please underline this point, having made them appear to his wisdom as things. So this is a complete thinking that he do. So I'll repeat the sentence again, the second paragraph, line number seven, six, line number six, the last, from the last part. Then he repeatedly observes those realities which have been thoroughly investigated, repeatedly investigated, having made them appear to his wisdom as things. Savigahe bia upattahante kappa. Right? So let me finish. So he investigates and he makes them to appear like things, not things, like things. It means make them very clear, right? And then uh, uh, this is called Chintame Panya. So what do you think? We applied Chintame Panya up to here. Now this has to be gone till here. So according to the commentary, Chintame Panya comes till up to here. So what I wanted to say, these all sort of understandings are based on our thinking, consideration, based on the learnedness. So that's why in many of the lectures I was mentioning, learnedness is the key for you to develop real vipassana wisdom. Then what happens? If you go to the third paragraph, having based on these two types of wisdom, sutamena, again, sutamena, And Chintamena, the yogi contemplates on phenomena such as mind and matter, conditionality of reality, and their universal characteristics. The knowledge which arises while thus contemplating, either in the field of Sotapati Magga or in the remaining Magga Palas, is called Bhavana. So, what he has to do is now, the, where does the Bhavana come? So, this is still called a Pachakana. So, my argument was. The Pachakanyana, which is explained in the sub-commentary, still falls into the Chintamaya group. So what I want to say is, the Pachakanyana, in explaining our tradition, is not only for direct experiences that we have through Abhinyana or with five Vinyan. This wisdom which is gained through this kind of consideration, thinking, contemplation, is also called a Pachakanyana. It's also called a Pachakanyana. So we see the tilakkana, uh, rising and falling, the three characteristics, they are all put into the chintame jnana. So where does the bhavana me jnana comes? So what we have to do is, the third paragraph says, based on these two wisdoms, so what we have known, you have to keep on repeating. Bhavana me means bhavana is developing. So you keep on repeating this wisdom, like it is impermanent, suffering, non-self, they, uh, they are not real, not being self. That's why in Buddhism, in Theravada tradition, we are asked to contemplate again and again. So what is this contemplation? It is not just a mere contemplation. Contemplation is based on this kind of a foundation knowledge. So what we have known with direct experience, direct means this is still a spachakanya. So this direct experience, we keep on repeating that wisdom. So what happens? When, during our repetition, bhavana me jnana arises in between. So when we come into this level, we repeat, a bhavana me jnana comes up here, knowing that there is no self. When we keep on repeating, bhavana me jnana arises, knowing the uh, 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 vipassana jnana is right. In the end, it comes into the bhavana me jnana of the four noble truths. Because what I want to say is, in this process, bhavana me jnana comes in few places. The ultimate bhavana me jnana is the uh, liberation, uh, magapala jnana, which attains at the end. So bhavana me jnana means when you repeat this wisdom, for example, sabhava jnana, after knowing that Interesting natures, you keep on repeating this contemplation, bhavana me jnana of ditti visuddhi arises. You contemplate on the pachyas, the bhavana me jnana of kanka vitana visuddhi arises. 
If you keep on contemplating the Lakana, the Bhavana Mayana, Samasana Yana, Udya Mayana, Vipassana Yana keeps on happening, keeps on arising. So the foundation is based on Sutta Mayana and Chintame Nyana. So this is what I wanted to emphasize in the last paragraph, and I'll give you a chance to ask the question. Uh, one question. So the last paragraph, I conclude the lecture because the time has elapsed. In addition to all the above classifications, in order to understand scientific theories, maths, physics, and various types of other subjects, one requires the support of Amoha. However, wisdom does not arise in the mind when someone uses his knowledge to bring harm on others. We have to understand, wisdom is there to understand the theories, but when we use them knowledge to harm on others, this is not Amoha, according to Buddhist teachings. For instance, one needs wisdom and knowledge on some basic facts in physics and chemistry to understand the functioning of a nuclear weapon. But if he uses that understanding for mass destruction, at the moment while planning and executing the act which is done with an evil intention, Amoha never occupies his mind. Then a question comes, how could such a person can devise a bomb accurately in warfare to achieve higher destruction of humans? So when they, when they place a bomb, they are not going to place a bomb in a forest. They will place a bomb where they can kill most of the humans. Right? This is done with uh, one kind of a investigating ability. Then a question comes, uh, if the answer is, uh, then a question comes, uh, how destruct? It is, isn't it planned? Done, it is planned with wisdom. The answer is no. At that moment, different unwholesome mentalities perform their function in the place of wisdom. It is mentioned in the Theravada tradition that in the unwholesome side, Vitakka, Vichara, Ditti, Loba, and Chitta can function as wisdom to deal evil acts competently. A person whose mind is associated with Amoha, as advocated in Buddhism, can never harm any living being deliberately. The final is the uh, yeah, conclusion, evil intention, Papa Chetana, never arises together with Amoha, with wisdom. So this is, these are the, I gave a lot of information, more than one hour, so uh, about the Amoha, this is what I could find uh, with the limited time, uh, yeah, to be true, I wrote this whole, whole uh, handout within one day. So this is, uh, otherwise there are lots of information that could be given, but with the limited time that uh, I, we have uh, for the lectures, this is what I would like to offer regarding Amoha. You can ask one question, I think Siali had a question, yeah. because time has elapsed. Yeah. 53. 53. Yes. Things means like, for example, if you take uh, uh, because according to the Abhidhamma point of view, they are just natures, right? They are just natures. If you take the Vayu Dhatu, for example, it's just a pushing nature. But your Vipassana Yogi in the sub-commentary says, even for a, a beginner of Vipassana or an advanced Vipassana Yogi, both, these realities appear to them as things. In Abhidhamma, we study they are natures, but in practicality, they appear as things when your wisdom grows. But it's a, it's a group of reality. So for example, a person when he is walking, for example, if he is walking from here to here, he may contemplate, he may feel the vayodhatu in such a manner. The vayodhatu, pushing nature, arises and passes away. So likewise, it appears to yogis in different, different yogis have different experiences on this matter. So, uh, appears to have things mean it becomes very vivid and clear. So that is another reason why there are when you come there are three types of magga, animitta, appanihita, and uh, animitta, appanihita, and vimutta, vim, uh, sunyata maggas, right? Sunyata. So, but in Abhidhamma point of view, there is no animitta magga. There is no animitta magga. So uh, in the vipassana, the vipassana, vipassana wisdom. As I remember, if my, if my knowledge was uh, remember was correct, this vipassana because there are two explanations on this anim animitta magga. So in the vipassana wisdom, it takes the realities which are animitta because it cannot overcome. It overcome this uh, compactness fully, right? It compactness fully. So uh, it's one extra information, and also I'm not very clear sure about that uh, my memory. Anyway, what I want to say was. The sub-commentary says, the literature says, 
that whether to a, a developed yogi or a beginner, amateur, the sankharas appear to them as things. It becomes when the wisdom is clearer, they appear as things, but they are not things in that actual nature. So you mean this is the one thing is uh, in the sense of opposite to the water uh, natures. Nature. Yeah, just that. because we say sankharas just are not things. They don't consume a space. We say. Patabi is just a nature of hardness. It doesn't have a shape, we say. But they appear to us as things with shapes in your personal practice. Like the body body, is the Vigha. Vigha is the body. Vigha. Manusa Vigha. The body of a human. So like by Vigha is a body. Savigha means Sankaras as things with bodies. Like Sankaras as realities with bodies. With bodies means things. Like things. Okay, I think uh, the time has elapsed, so we can close the class.